these emerging franchisors are kind of on their own. There is not really this single source of truth for franchisees or prospective franchisees to go out and try to find the brand that's truly the best fit for them. And so we created this platform with all that in mind. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here. I'm your host. It's wonderful to have you back with us. And if this is your first time, welcome to the show. I know you're going to get a great deal of value out of joining us. And uh, on today's show, I have the wonderful opportunity to speak with Jimmy St. Louis. Welcome to the show, Jimmy. Hey, Rick, thanks for having me. Absolutely. My pl- my pleasure, Jimmy. Now, we're going to be talking, obviously, about uh, your business that you founded and are CEO at, which is called Franchise 123. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about the franchise development industry and how, how Franchise 123 is changing the way franchises and franchisees connect. But before we do any of that, Jimmy, it's important for us to learn about the people behind the business, because I know that business fundamentally doesn't change all that much. So uh, let's start off by finding out where home is for you. Sure. Yep. I'm actually located uh, in in Tampa, Florida. So I've been all over the United States, but for the last 14 years, I've found my way here to Tampa and um, have had the chance to run a couple companies out of this area. And it's a pleasure to live here. Tell us what drew you to the to the location. So I actually came down here for work. Uh, prior to living in Tampa, I was working up on Wall Street uh, and as, as an investment banker and an analyst. And uh, prior to that, I was actually uh, playing professional football. So um, playing professional I was, football. yeah, well, American football. Yeah, so yeah. I had the, had the opportunity to play uh, professional football. And then I was up in New York and I got called down to Tampa to help start a um, medical spine surgery business. And I uh, was involved in that for about six years from 2006 until 2012. I think this is a great segue early in the piece to talk to a a former sports person because I know that um, discipline and mindset have a massive part to play in your success. So do you think any of that mindset has transferred into your business space? Yeah, I think probably. um, It's been a bit inherent in me since uh, as far back as I can remember. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, I think probably a lot of things you learn in sports, but you could probably learn in other areas of life as well. You learn about relationships, camaraderie, uh, certainly the work ethic and the focus and your ability to properly segment and manage your time. I think you learn that over the course of your life as an athlete. It doesn't mean you you don't learn those in other areas of your life, Mm -hmm. but that was the path I chose. Do you have uh, any time for uh, sports and hobbies still? Well, uh, I do. And in fact, uh, up until 2016, I was still competing uh, competitively. I was uh, training for the U.S. Olympic rowing team uh, back in 2016 to try to make a run at the at the Rio Olympics and uh, stumbled upon that sport in late 2014 and made a, made a hard run at it. And so uh, competitive sports have always been just a part of who I am, uh, currently training for triathlons and always trying to find ways to optimize my health and hopefully later, you know, much later in life, the my length of life will be my quality of life. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'd, I'd love to talk about that if we could in terms of daily routines. What's it look like for you? Is are you an early riser? I'm an early riser. You know, I think that um, you know, there's you know, there people live by that. You know, the early bird gets the worm. But for me in particular, I just like that quiet time. Uh, I'm also in bed late and I just enjoy that quiet time where either late at night or early in the morning where the world may still be sleeping and you get that time to think about your plans for the day, get that time to catch up uh, without a lot of noise around you. Mm -hmm. And so I really just... Uh, the only the main reason I'm an early riser is really just to appreciate that quiet time. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. I always love these windows into people's lives. So uh, when you talk about quiet time, you know, for me, it's reflecting. Just looking out the backyard, we've got a beautiful view here. I'm wondering what your quiet time looks like. Do you watch movies? Do you do the same things? What do you do? For me, in the mornings, I like to wake up and read. Um, I sometimes go in the sauna. There's meditation. Uh, 
this morning, uh, my girlfriend and I went for a, a paddleboard. And that was nice. You know, it's, it's it can be a variety of things. Um, if I am alone when I'm traveling, I like to wake up, read a chapter of a book, answer some emails, and then uh, after you know five ten minutes of meditation, I'll go and work out. And mm-hmm. just uh, people think I'm a little silly when I work out without headphones and without music, <laughs> but I just. I really just kind of get in the zone there and um, like to be left alone and just go work out. And just that's kind of the quiet time that helps me give the chance to think. Yeah, thank you again. Now, I wonder if we, you know, wind back time a little bit and we go back to your childhood growing up. Where was it that you grew up and what can you remember one fond memory of growing up in your childhood? So to me, my father was in the military and we, we traveled all over, uh, but we spent five years in Seattle, Washington, the Pacific Northwest. And that to me was the most instrumental time of my life. Um, it, the, it's kind of constantly a little bit foggy and rainy there a little bit, but doesn't ever lighten your thunder. So you have the chance to do anything and <laughs> everything outside at all times. And I lived outside climbing trees, playing sports, getting a little bit of trouble as a kid. And <laughs> it really just taught me um, just really the, the benefits and love for nature and yeah. uh, that to me was probably the most instrumental time of my life this is very important because i think it gives some good context about who you are as an individual what what your belief systems are and what you you value in your life and and i wonder uh, i know that you're an educated uh, individual um do you still find time to um take in more content keep learning how important is ongoing learning do you think in your life Sure. Um, so I read about a book a week um, by the six month mark for this year. I read about 35 books. And wow. I'm just constantly trying to, to look for new, um, new tools out there. So I'd say it's about half business books, which would include you know, leadership, tactical, strategic. And then the other half is uh, encompassed with either health and wellness or just books for, for pleasure and leisure. Um, but I try to wake up in the morning and uh, read and just try to gain a little bit of knowledge. To me, that's, that's a bit of the fountain of youth. You know, yes. I think that you really kind of, when you stop making, having the ability to learn and make decisions for yourself, I think that's where life starts to take a turn. And Turns so to a road, for me, it? that's exactly right. Yep. So um, is there a common thread that you find through the nonfictional uh, business books that you read, given that you read so many of them? I think that they're all with the intention of trying to help somebody. Mm. I think the common thread may be a little bit different than what people would anticipate. To me, it's that there really is no magic formula everybody's looking for the 10 steps or the two steps or do these things and Mm -hmm. you're going to be better. Um, I think systematically people like systems, same thing like with what we're doing with franchise one, two, three, but the reality is in these books there, the common thread is that there is no magic formula, but I do believe that if you can stick with a formula that works for you, for your personality and for who you are, then it does increase the likelihood of success. Uh, I'm reading a book called Noise right now, which I think is great for this conversation. It really talks about how noise in the environment really prevents your ability to make good and accurate decisions. Mm -hmm. We are flooded with so much information out there and there's, it's hard to dissect what's right and wrong and what's up and down. And I think that a lot of that is because we're overloaded with information and we just don't really know where to go. Yeah, that's some sage feedback. Thank you again. Now, uh, you talked about systems and we're going to be jumping into the core of the call in in a short moment, but uh, you talked about your father a little earlier. And I wonder, in your formative years growing up, were there any other people that uh, influenced you uh, into the man that you've become today? Everybody. Either, you know, I've got uh, several siblings and mother, father, stepmother, stepfather, Mm -hmm. um, all my best friends. Um, I'm still very close with uh, a few of my best friends. I've got, they're spread throughout the country. had the chance to actually see them last weekend. It was a pretty special time. Um, But I think that just relationships in general with good, honest people that really care about you is really just important. And that could be a best friend, a spouse, a family member. Uh, but to me, every one of them really played a significant part in in my role um, and what I'm doing in life. But I think 
if for whatever reason, I was just around people that were always very supportive and very excited about uh, the next journey for me. And I think they would say have, have always had a tremendous amount of focus uh, towards goals. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always had people around me who are willing to support me and, and help me out with those. So just for a further bit of context, just share a little bit about your former corporate background and your, your experience. Sure. So after I was in uh, New York, I made my way down to Tampa, Florida, and was uh, one of the original individuals who started a, uh, a network of spine surgery centers here in Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. And we had a tremendous amount of success. We started that company with just nine employees and Five years later, we had over a thousand employees and we were over a couple hundred million in revenue. And mm -hmm. we really did some really interesting things there. We were the first company, at least as we can see, in healthcare to market direct to consumer with Google AdWords. And we were able to generate a, a tremendous amount of patients. Uh, we accompanied that by a uniquely positioned type of surgery that we were doing with tremendous results. And we started a network of surgery centers throughout the country. Hmm. Um, I was involved with that company for five years um, as the chief operating officer. And during an 18 month stint there, uh, our CEO had some personal things going on. So I ran the company and we were able to see some tremendous growth during that time. Mm -hmm. um, so after I uh, sold my shares in that organization, I then moved on to start my own healthcare consulting company. I did that with the intention on finding the next opportunity in healthcare. And I was looking for what is that market where there's an unmet need as a part of healthcare that has not changed in decades, but patients are really in need. And we had this theme kind of get paid to watch the movie where we were engaging with a number of different organizations, bringing our business model into those organizations. And we were trying to see where it would be best fit. Mm -hmm. We were fortunate enough to find a couple of companies we really liked. Um, we acquired a, a portfolio of cellular based therapy patents, uh, this group in Miami and we moved them up to Tampa, Florida. We rebranded them to a regenerative medicine company, and we started a network of uh, lung treatment centers utilizing your own cells uh, to treat chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or other uh, types of pulmonary disease like emphysema, et cetera. <clears throat> and we then were fortunate enough to partner with the, uh, the Mayo Clinic, and we actually exited that company in uh, 2013, mm -hmm. and then the lung therapy company we exited in 2017. Um, yeah, wow. so that's I spent the last um, <laughs> 13 years building out those companies. Yeah, yeah, wow, thank you for sharing. That's a really great context. Now, why franchising? What happened there? How did this all come about? So, a bit of an interesting story. So, I did mention earlier when I was spending time um, trying to make the United States rowing team mm -hmm. and I had entered a competition uh, called the World Indoor Rowing Championships, the Crash B Sprints out in Boston, and had never really done the sport before. About a thousand people there competing and actually finished third. And um, I picked up the phone and called the, the head of uh, high performance rowing for the mm -hmm. US rowing team and said, hey, I'd like to see if I could learn the sport, um, have some time uh, now. Um, I've had the chance to have a successful business career and I have a little bit of time. And so they actually flew me out to Seattle and then I spent some time learning how to row. And then I spent some time down at the Olympic training center, actually 18 months and uh, made a really hard run at the Olympics. And um, so this, that's back in 2016, I was at the Olympic training center and a little bit older than the other guys there, um, about eight to 10 years older than most of the guys there. Um, but I had that strong sports background, the endurance running background, the football background. So I was able to uh, you know, have the, the physical fitness to perform. I just had to learn how to do the sport. So <laughs> I spent a lot of time doing that. And, but while these guys were doing you know, their, and they're off time, they're playing PlayStation, they're hanging out. I was really trying to tune my mind. And 
I was actually watching the news uh, early morning. I was watching the Today Show, and they did this special on this brand called City Row. Uh, City Row is like an orange theory for rowing. It's a it's a franchise. Um, it's a boutique fitness franchise where you do the circuit training and rowing, and it was hitting really big in New York City. And so I picked up the phone and called them and said, I would like to open up a handful of them in Florida and um, you know see if I can build out a big network of these boutique fitness rowing franchises there. Um, they said, you know, after we had the chance to talk about business background, so you know, I don't know that you're going to want to run some franchises. Why don't we introduce you to the to our managing partner? We may have some bigger opportunities for you. And so an individual named John Raji, um, he owns a company called Franworth and he's with Domino's and Krispy Kremes. He's a well-known franchise guy. Yes. He helped found title boxing. And we became just very, very good friends. And he started to mentor me in the world of franchising. And as I spent more and more time in his operation, they're located in Ann Arbor, Michigan, I started to notice that there was a big unmet need in franchising. And I noticed that while they were addressing one part of the unmet need, which is uh, there are individual people out there who, you know, the next door neighbor who wants to franchise their, say, their bakery. They may not know the leg- the legality is around it. They may not be able to build up the operating systems. But what I noticed with these emerging brands was what they don't really don't know how to do is they don't know how to sell. Yeah. And so in order to expand your franchises, and it often takes anywhere from 50 to 100 units before you even become sufficient to support your operations with the revenues from your royalties, they aren't able to sell. So what they're going in one of two different ways. I'm looking at their books and saying, what is going on here with this significant consulting fee that you guys are paying for your emerging brands. He said, well, that's what we're paying to brokers to sell for us so we can expand our brand. So, okay, um, help me understand this a little bit more. What I noticed was if you've got, say, City Row, for example, and their franchise fee is $50,000, well, that's the only money, when they sell a franchise, that's the only money that City Row is going to get until years down the road when they have successful operations generating enough revenue from royalties to help the franchisor stand up on their own two feet. <clears throat> so anywhere from 50 to 75% of that franchise fee was going back to the broker for their commissions. Yeah. And certainly the broker's working hard. Um, they're paying for these leads. They're working hard to do this. But what I noticed was the only person who was winning really in that situation was the broker. The franchisor was back with less cash. And oftentimes the franchisee would invest in three to five units, but they would only open one, but they paid all that cash out. Mm. And so I said, you know, this seems to be a problem. And what this really reminds me of is the real estate world. And before you had Zillow and Realtor.com, you had to go to an agent, you had to go to a broker, and you were really at the mercy of of them. They were going to tell you what was in the market, which, which homes to look at, which homes not to look at, and you were a bit at their mercy. So that's that was problem one. Problem two was there's these things called lead portals um, that are out there where um, you may type in, hey, I want to buy a franchise. It directs you towards a portal and you would start to click on brands, just any brand you like, any brand you recognized. As a consumer, you are clicking on that brand kind of without really knowing much about it. Mm -hmm. And then that brand pays that portal anywhere from $50 to $100 for that lead just for the chance to talk to you. Well, the problem is with the emerging brands, so they're either working with the brokers or they're paying money towards the portals, and so they're either paying out high commissions or they're getting really, really poorly qualified leads. In fact, they're only reaching about one out of 25 of those leads that they pay for from the portals. So they're spending a lot of time and a lot of effort trying to grow their own business. And we noticed, wow, these these emerging franchisors are really just... Um, kind of on their own. They're, 
is not really the single source of truth for franchisees or prospective franchisees to go out and try to find the brand that's truly the best fit for them. And so we said, you know what we need to do? We need to build out the Zillow of franchising. Yeah. We need to build this single source of truth where people can go and gather true, fair, accurate information, and then not only gather the information, but engage with those brands that may be a true good fit for them. And then let those brands, our platform's open interface, let those brands go on there and make their profile good and accurate and attractive. And so we created this platform with with all that in mind. So, you know, this, yeah, this that's is kind great. of a long story for how we got into <laughs> oh, this. Oh, no, no. That's, that's, yeah. that's wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing. Now, there's obviously two sides to this, franchisors, franchisees. Um, um, now, do you help the um, or prospective franchisors um, prior to coming on to your platform to see if they're a good fit, if they're ready to become franchisors? Or do you only deal with existing ones? Sure. So, uh, and for the listeners as well, just to clarify, so franchisor, yep. that's the holding company. Yes, the yes, franchisee, yes. that's the person who's uh, going to that company to say, I'd like to open up a location in my backyard. That's um, franchising so, in a nutshell. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so we, um, we believe that there's a number of unmet needs that we're addressing with our platform. Mm-hmm. So the first is to give prospective franchisees all the information they need to make the right decision for themselves. The second is to give franchisors the chance to compete against groups they may not have had the chance to compete against before. You know, maybe that's an emerging bakery. It's a mobile, you know, it's a mobile based uh, van business to go and repair your, you know, your roof, your garage. It may be a boutique fitness what we're trying to do is we're trying to give the emerging brands a fair shake to compete against the big players. Yeah. And so we will often have the majority of the groups that are on there, although we have all 4,000 franchisors on our platform, the ones that are actively engaged are typically the emerging brands. They have anywhere from 10 to 100 units. And then I'd say about 15% of the phone calls we receive are of groups who are considering franchising. And they're saying, we want to franchise, we'd like to see what the market looks like, you think it's a good idea. And that has given us the idea that down the road, we do anticipate building out an industry standard suite of services, where if you have someone next door who wants to franchise, say their fitness concept, Mm -hmm. they can plug in and we'll be able to provide them with that back office infrastructure that they may have had to go out and find on their own, the, the credit yes. card processing, the HR systems, the accounting systems. Uh, but for now, our main focus is to give prospective franchisees all the information they need to match with the best fit for them. It really opens up the opportunity, whereas it may not have been available to them in the past, doesn't it? I um, I sit here and I think to myself, what a wonderful platform. Now, in all of this, I wonder, and I'm always interested to find out where the names for these organizations come from. Where did you choose Franchise 123? How did that come about? So some of my partners uh, just, you know, we were brainstorming and their whole thought process was the there's a lack of systemization within franchise. And that may seem ironic, but you've got the systems as a franchisor, but there really isn't a sophisticated, simple, and easy to understand system for individuals who want to buy a franchise. It's very complicated, it's very confusing. There's lots of note taking, there's a lot of distrust. So we said, we want to help people understand that within three key decision points throughout the process, research, identify, and decide as our three steps, uh, we wanted to help individuals understand that buying a franchise can indeed be fairly straightforward. Now, this is um, what strikes me about this is Franchise 123 could clearly be a global presence. Is that correct? Certainly. The the main thing is for us to understand the, the legalities uh, that are uh, more worldwide, mm. but absolutely. Uh, we also believe that it's going to be a great platform for franchisees to resell their units where if you have an individual who's got a, say, a boutique fitness center and they're ready to just retire or to move on, 
our data, database is so significant, we can say, okay, these are the number of leads that are looking to buy a boutique fitness center in your area. And here's who they're currently looking at. So we think that that transaction can be relatively straightforward. And it's oftentimes a much easier thought process to decide on what we would call a, a going concern mm -hmm. as opposed to a, a new business. And so we think that the resale market worldwide will be, uh, will be pretty significant for us. So what's been happening recently, given the nature of the world we're living in at the moment, has there been an uptick in the interest in franchisees um, coming through? So when you look at franchising, you know, you really touch all aspects of business. Mm -hmm. You could be thinking about a McDonald's or you could be thinking about investing in a, a van that's going to uh, go and make your garage look nicer, right? So kind of all ends of the spectrum. What we're seeing within franchising right now is, yes, the number of franchise transactions that are taking place are actually increasing, but we're seeing them increase in some specific areas. One, a lot of remote-based work. So mm -hmm. we're seeing there's, there's accounting system franchises out there. Uh, we're seeing that there are um, home improvement franchises. So mm -hmm. those, you know, everybody's sitting at home. They want their, yep. their <laughs> home and their home office to look nice. So people yes, are really yes. investing a lot of time into that as well. So we are seeing certain sectors of the industry, really those businesses that could have been run remotely, the non-bricks and mortar ones, that's mm -hmm. when we're starting to see the, the franchises begin to emerge. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, 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 I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, well, how do I get involved? What are the, I guess, the, the technological steps that I have to go through? Um, because clearly you're in an innovative space, you're a disruptor, and you're going to be changing this market. So there must be some sort of a different approach to the way in which you're connecting people. Sure. So when you are interested in franchising or just want to learn a little bit more about it, you just go to franchise123.com and uh, in just a couple quick steps, you fill out some information. We have a little algorithm that begins to match you up with the best brands for you. It's kind of an intuitive, fun thing to watch. It starts at 4,100 brands and as you click on different options that are important to you, you see that number start to shrink down to just less than 100. And now you've started to get some clarity as to what may be a good fit for you. That whole process takes about three minutes. Uh, three so minutes for total. us, that's <laughs> th three minutes and uh, they're ready to go. Now, the, yeah. the more kind of complex side of things is on the franchisor side. Uh, they can go on, they can upload their presentations. In a matter of a couple minutes, they can build out their own microsites on Franchise123. So now they'll have their own franchise development website. They can upload scripts and we are engaged with an AI software that creates video presentations with sales scripts that they may have. There's a, a multitude of services for the franchisor to go on to really make their brand pop. And the algorithm on our site is set up in a way in which the more traffic and the larger the audience that goes towards their brand is, the more front and center they will be. It's oh, similar to say like a, like a Google, um, Google algorithm search. as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, given the nature of business being uh, people connecting with people and working with others, um, do you have um, human support services to, to help those who might need it? So if you are on there and you're interested in engaging with the brand, uh, those brands that have signed up with us, they have either asked us to provide them with the sales support or they may mm -hmm. have built out their own sales infrastructure. Uh, you as the individual won't really notice the difference. Uh, if you go and you click on a brand that's that has their own sales team, when you engage, you will schedule a call with, through the same exact software uh, that you would if you were scheduling a call with us. So it's very straightforward, very simple. Um, but the short answer is yes, we have a, a, a sales team who will mm -hmm. work with you directly to help point you towards the right brand. And the beauty of Franchise123 versus working within, say, a franchise consultant network or a broker network is we want to help pair you up with the brand that truly is the best fit for you. And we have access to all 4,000 of those brands and we will help guide you to the one we think is the best fit for you. There's not really a, a dog in the fight for us. We just want to see a high level of success for the franchisees and to instill the confidence that they're making the right decision. 
Thank you again for the feedback, uh, Jimmy. Now I'm looking at your website um, and it's wonderful. It's uh, very clear, very uh, easy to understand, which I think is important. But um, given the nature of the mobile technology that we all use today, uh, are there other ways for people to be able to access this, this uh, information? Sure. So we do have a mobile app. You can go just type in franchise123.com. It's more of what the tech world would call an MVP or a minimum viable product at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go on to you download that app, you will answer a series of questions. That algorithm will then pair you up with about a hundred or so options. And then similar to like a dating app, we've created a dating app for business. Mm -hmm. You'll swipe left or right based upon if you, if you don't like it or you do like it. And when you do like it, then you can, you would then be directed towards the, the web platform to engage with the brand. But on your mobile device, you can research and you can start to identify ones that may be uh, the best fit for you. And then ultimately, we plan on migrating our, our full suite of services over to uh, a mobile version here within the next six months. Very exciting times. Lots to uh, come in the next 12 to 18 months, I'm sure. Jimmy, thank you very much for sharing. Now, if you are interested in uh, learning more about Franchise123, the website is very easy to remember. It's Franchise123.com. There's obviously uh, links to Google Play and the App Store to download the app directly. Make sure you check it out. It's well worthwhile. This will give you a great start into the franchising space. And with all that being said, Jimmy, thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business business show today. Great. Thank you, Rick, for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.